And I woke up to a message that Kat was in the ER. I rushed to the hospital and went and talked to the doctor. He's like, Gibby, she's alive. That was the first thing he told me. When I walked in, she, uh, she looked bad. But a lot of things were good. She didn't have any internal organ damage. She didn't need the, the operating room. I don't understand how I don't have a brain injury. I don't understand how my neck didn't break. And I don't understand how I didn't die on scene because of the amount of trauma, like the amount of force. It doesn't make any sense to me. And the injuries that I then sustain don't make logical sense. I've seen lesser accidents kill people and I've seen worse accidents not. It's, it's the little things I think I, when I look back, it's like my bike shoes, not a scuff on them. It doesn't make any, like, that's mad to me. It could have been a very different day for everybody. Hey, I'm Tim Don, a uh, four-time world champion, three-time Olympian, and professional triathlete. I've been a professional triathlete since 1997. And I've been hit by one car. I really remember the surgeon came and they said, look, you've broken your neck, it's C2. And they said, um, you know, where it is, your blood vessels are very close, so don't move because they affect the blood flow to your brain. For me, that's when it was just like, oh, it had just, it just all ended. Um, you know, I was running well, swimming well, biking well. I just broke, I, holding the Ironman world record, I put it together. That was my moment in time and I'll never have that again. I found out, yeah, through social media. The beauty with, with Kat is she's young enough. I just hope she doesn't rush back because um, she, wa she wants to be remembered for someone who, 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 who has podiumed at Kona, who, who has shown you know, that potential you know, to reality. She's still got to have the belief and faith that it will happen. And the worst thing she can do is, is do too much too soon. When she wakes up tomorrow and she's got to have the team and she's got to believe that less is more. She cannot rush this process. Training hard and racing easy isn't about smashing yourself every day, it's making the tough decisions and for most people it's taking a step back. She may never fully recover in terms of the way she feels. Kat knows all too well that the decisions she makes now and over the next few months you know, could impact 40 years time. Everybody's had a bad day. I've just woken up with quite a stiff back. And one of many fleeting thoughts like, oh, I wonder if I'll ever wake up again and my back doesn't hurt. Not, am I doing too much exercise or have I got doms from yesterday's session or was yesterday's intervals too hard? It's, will I ever just have a healthy back again? Which is pretty scary. And then it comes back to nobody really knows. The act of just completing a training session still allows me to reset that bad day. Even if it was a bad session, it's still a positive step forwards or sidestep to staying in a neutral place and being healthy. I don't think it really crossed my mind that I wouldn't get back to professional triathlon. I think by the time I left the hospital, I was healthy. I hadn't, you know, I hadn't, I'd broken some bones but I didn't let it cross my mind that I wouldn't. Equally, I don't think I was thinking about it necessarily at that time. I think I'm actually less worried about Kat going too hard than Kat is, because Kat's really sensible. I trust her to make the right decisions. The doctors always say, oh, you know, 
better to be safe than sorry, go nice and slow. But I am pretty confident that I'm going as slow as mentally possible. And I don't think it would be any different if I was to go any slower. Recovery started off Herculean, like Wolverine. Her ability to move, take the brace off, support herself, the way her skin started healing so quickly, everything was just incredibly fast. Everything's feeling surprisingly good and also surprising, well not surprising, but also pretty bad. Just little aches and pains that aren't normal, are now normal. Um, so I'm trying to learn again what feels right and what feels like too much. It's a lot of management of her body rebuilding and the tissues rebuilding and that can take up to a year to remodel. So it is a, it is a day by day and even now, four months later, she's going to feel the effects of that. Her body's not the same. So that, that day to day from the time when she was hurt, every day until she gets back to cat with her triathlon potential, until she gets back, that's going to be a, a minute to minute, day to day management of what happened until she overcomes it and gets stronger. She'll be stronger for it, I bet. Yeah, Mr. Mr. MRI machine. I think she'll still have to deal with some things. She may have imbalances, um, you know, from the injury. But I think it's nothing that any athlete wouldn't come up against. Um, Helen was the lady I spoke to. Do you know where radiology is? Or just... Uh, I just gonna walk. And yeah, I'm down here, there. Um, and it should there should be a sign. Yeah, to the right. Yeah. Right. So this is the coolest place. Because she's going to train so hard anyway, she's going to have muscle strains and she's going to have pains and she's going to have issues that she needs to deal with. So I think a lot of those post-traumatic feelings or pain or new things she needs to stretch, I think she would probably just take it in stride as a new thing she needs to stretch. Hey, look, that hurts today. Let's deal with it. One thing I didn't mention was all the rest of the muscles that stopped and tried to catch her when she stopped and tore. So she will have injuries that we didn't see on CAT scan because we don't look for that. We look for the things that will kill her. That's all the, the physiotherapy, that's all these muscles that all tried to stop her from dying and they, they did a good job. But those muscles took the brunt of it too. So it's achy muscles, it's soreness, it's deep, deep bone bruises that we won't see on CAT scan, that we didn't MRI because it's not detrimental from a trauma standpoint, but it is detrimental from a professional athlete standpoint. The last people you see when you go to bed and the first people you see when you wake up are your family. Yeah, you go on training camps and stuff, but you know, they're the ones you want to tell your, your success, but more importantly, they're the ones you want to tell when things aren't going right. So yeah, they're a massive part, you know, and I think the, the network that you've got around you and family isn't necessarily blood. It can be your, your, your best friend from college, university, from the army, you know, a training partner. But yeah, they're, they're everything. And I think, um, you know, that support is, is what, it, what, what gets you through the tough times. And you know, no matter, you know, what happens, you know, when the gun goes, that they're always going to be there. So I've, I'm currently leaving the army. So I'm, uh, my last day in uniform is the 21st of February. Uh, I decided to leave the army in about 20 minutes in St. George. I just, it, I really love what I do in the army, but I realized one day that, that I wouldn't be able to be there for the most important race. So one day I'd have to go and do something somewhere and it stopped me being there to support Kat. I decided I wasn't willing to tolerate that anymore. With me leaving the army as well, next year will be the first time I think she can train how most people see a pro athlete training. I think if you look at the, the, the girls and guys she's trying to beat, they, they live in a stable base, they've set up an environment around them to support excellence. And Kat's never had that because we've been on the hoof. Whereas hopefully now living just outside Loughborough, we've kind of 
found that foundation. I feel so proud to um, partner with Canyon this year. An aspirational brand to partner with and it feels so supportive and so equally like exciting from my side and their side that we're both in the same place. So a true partnership for performance. Cats always thought that Canyon are cool. Um, and we always had this idea that you, you've got to take brands that make you look cool. She went with the brand that wants a performance edge that just kind of is happy to be cool and win races and that's what Canyon did in a nutshell. Canyon is, is more than a bicycle brand. But we are also there to support our, our pro athletes and that's what we are doing. We, we are looking for people, of course, which are successful. Get Matthews. That's, that's a Kenyan athlete. We had a good feeling from, from, her, from her personality. If I see her riding on a, on a, on a, on a Kenyan bike, it's, it's, already very, it's already brilliant. I've got that confidence that they know me thoroughly and what I'm going through, and they're still backing me to win. But I think uh, it will not take longer. I do not have one doubt that she will not be competing. What, what she could achieve in her career, she could win Kona five times. She's just so resilient. If Kat had to finish an Ironman tomorrow, she'd go sub nine. I don't think I'll ever be over it until I race and perform at the same level or better. So I'm going to just jump in and go for it. With individual sport, I love that it's, it's whatever work you put in, your performance is your own and that is how good you are. It's not somebody else's opinion. I know the theory of pressure. It's your own emotion. And stress is a choice as well. I love the individual side of it. I love that diversity. Having so many factors to triathlon. The element of working for something bigger than yourself. I've always done things that need not just effort. They need patience. They need skill. They need time. I want to be good enough to win again. I felt like I was good enough to win last year and I didn't get a chance to show it. And now I want to be good enough to win again.